We have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. The Incremental Podcast. I'm Eric Redinger. Not so solo today. Got my best buddy and director producer John Paul Labadee, Pulling who's here to make fun of me. For you, buddy. Pull my angles of my dangles, buddy. See how many times we can say buddy. Okay, buddy. Uh, well, I had you on because um, today I'd like to just talk a little bit about. Um, weightlifting and diet and all the various things you can do to your body to make you a little bit better and you're kind of going through that right now well for a, a number of years really if we're being honest right yeah um and just trying to lose weight you've been on the keto uh ketogenic diet on and off a little bit how are you looking right now are you feeling good or are you feeling bad are you on the down slope or up slope What's it looking like, bud? I'm on the uh, upslope. I what was actually interesting. So this is pretty abnormal for me because I did the keto thing, you know, last year, and I lost the weight. And New Year's, my New Year's resolution was to gain weight. I guess <laughs> so. I was just binging for the last month. But I, I don't know if that's a resolution. That was maybe an accident. Exactly. Yes. It, Which is everybody's accident. You're not alone. Yeah, and I was very surprised to see that I haven't gained weight. So it's really weird. Like I think that my body kind of got acclimated, and I I just I almost became like a skinny person who they can eat whatever they want and they don't gain weight. But because um, usually what it, you know I would eat bad food and I'll just gain weight no matter what, just be gaining. But for some reason I haven't gained in the last month, and I think it's just because. I don't know. I was running way healthier, but I'm back on it and I'm not cheating anymore. But well, I mean, as far as like the guy who doesn't lose or eats whatever he wants and doesn't gain weight, you know, that's you're not going to turn into that person or, uh, you know, gain that that I take that back because part of this is about gaining muscle mass, which can Im improve your metabolism. But for what you're dealing with, um, it's probably more just when you're bigger, you require more calories and the calories don't have as much of an effect as uh, somebody smaller. You know, it's all relative with everything in life. So, you know, you'll be all right if you, if you just get the discipline down, because that's what this is all about. Discipline, getting used to going into the gym, not bitching about it, you know, just kind of accepting the fact that you're going to have to use your body every day. Yeah. And, you know, I don't, I actually, yesterday, the day before, canceled my gym membership, and I literally went in there and said it was my New Year's resolution to cancel. To cancel it. Because, I, honestly, like, I I can just use my body weight, and I don't have to, I don't need weights right now. I think push-ups and just body resistance and, you know, running is all I need to do. That's Yeah, that's true for most people. That's the thing. It's like... I guess I should mention that um, once upon a time I was a certified strength and conditioning specialist. I do know all the terms. I know mostly what I'm doing. So I'm not going to lead you down a path of just some jackass talking out of his butt, right? Yeah. But um, uh, what were we talking Oh, um, for beginners and most people, you don't need things beside your body weight. Um, like at my house, I've got resistance bands, which are great for ligaments and tendons and strengthening these little things and as you get older um the lifting the heavy weights it's helpful it's definitely good for uh maintaining bone mass having muscle around your bones great osteoporosis is a bitch um you just have to be to that point i think like really uh, you know i i'm not at the point where i need to be lifting weights like i'm not that even strong enough right like, and my point is that n most people aren't even i really don't even when I go into the gym now, I've been over it a couple times, but like I lift weights four times a week 
And the stuff I'm doing is not like, it's not crazy. Like, look at me, the guy who's, you know, doing crazy shit in the gym. It's a lot of like, sit up straight, make sure my posture is correct because the bottom line on this podcast is your posture is going to change everything for you. If you have bad posture, it's going to make your body look weird and not the way you want it. And you can lift all the weights you want in the world. But if your posture is bad, the little muscles that hold up your, your torso, they don't ever get worked properly. So you see the guys that don't have like a full looking torso. I don't know if, if that makes sense, but you know how it just looks differently when people are standing up straight and it looks better. It's because their little muscles that are in their, their obliques and their, uh, their core are strengthened. To the point to where they're, it's all muscle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and you know, um, I know that it's a hot topic right now for our group of friends, but like the psoas muscle, I don't know if you've talked about it on the podcast. but on my notes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, that that seems to be, you know, hunched over, that's just contracting everything. Like we're always, we're always contracting that muscle whenever stretching it exactly. out. And that posture, sitting up and just stretching out that whole, your whole torso, I think it's definitely huge. Especially for people like us that are on a computer a lot of times. And actually, we can use the side angle because it's look, if you can see the side of uh, my body, the psoas is going to be right at your torso and your legs where it meets. That's where it connects. And you can see here that it is at an L, which is not good for your posture. So I have to sit up like this. That's why I got the little saddle over there that I'm not using. And when that thing gets gets tight, it makes your whole body tight and your shoulders roll forward and you want to just slowly sink into the slouching and that's no good for anybody. Yeah. But yeah, that's huge. The psoas, yeah. foam rollers. That'll help you get that nice and loose. I like to lay down a foam roller and uh, just kind of roll it up and down and see what uh, feels good to stretch, you know? The whole contraction, like you're, you're always, your muscles, you know, are made to only contract. Right, your muscles are always pulling, even when you're pushing out. Well, your yeah, muscles are pulling. Your your muscles act as a uh, pulley system. So if you've got one muscle that's pulling, you've got another one that's kind of pushing or going in the opposite direction. They like, don't push though. I didn't think. Well, it's not pushing; it's moving in the opposite direction. So, like your triceps and your biceps work in tandem, where they're doing the opposite of each other. You know what I'm saying? So if you push down on your triceps, you do a triceps push down. Your biceps are still involved in that, but they're just the other side of the pulley. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I cut you I off. You. What were you talking about contracting there, bud? No, it's just I think we concentrate on so much, you know, of the like con everything's contracting in our body and the stretching and and just opening up your gait and everything is something that we don't do at all yeah. it's all contractions even running like your legs are going up and down and your core is contracting like it's yeah a good walk if you have a good posture while you're walking you your uh your core should be sore you know if you're holding it the way you're supposed to which is not easy most people are not contracting their core and lifting their ribs up the way they should be all the time i don't i mean you can see me from the side i have to work to sit up straight mm -hmm. really i mean it's 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 a focus of mine because I sit here and preach it all the time. Um, but you get stronger through your posture on things that you might not even be, uh, you know, cognizant of. Um, but really, uh, talking about people just beginning and stuff, um, my wife and my mom have a new year's resolution to go to the gym more. Okay. And, uh, I, I went once with them one time and ran through um, some basic things. And what I was showing them is you've got only so many muscle groups that you need to think about. Um, for women, it's even really easier, if I'm being honest, because, like, dudes got to have buys and tries, got to be able to flex. Women, really, it's squats and core stuff. And if you want to do, you know, chest and back exercises, that's all good. But really, that's calorie burning. Um, and you know, I'm going through it with them right now where I'm just like, you guys, this is all about just strengthening the tendons and ligaments around these muscles so that you don't hurt yourself. My mom's in her 60s. She's not winning power lifting competitions. She just needs to get in there and get used to it so that she can have this calorie burn and maybe build a little bit of muscle so that old osteoporosis don't set in. 
Yeah. Um, in terms of like uh, eating, so you doing the keto right now, or are you uh, trying to transition back? Yeah, I'm pretty much trying to do full keto. You know what? Like, I'm kind of not looking forward to being keto though because I I like having fruits and I mean right. I just I kind of feel like I want to don't want to set myself up for I want to set myself up for the long term and I don't know if not eating fruits and stuff all the time is long term, you know. Well, so like I I'm most of the time in ketosis, but like I'll eat fruit. I'll eat apples with peanut butter late at night, you know, need them munchies, something sweet. Key is just moving. Like when people it's a problem for me when people talk about the keto diet because they'll be you gotta eat twenty five grams of carbs or less a day. Boom, that's it. Bottom line. It's like no. Michael Phelps does he can eat more than twenty five grams of carbs a day and be in ketosis. It's a matter of relative movement to what you're bringing in. If you're burning those those carbs as they come in, you can remain in ketosis. Um but are right, when you say you're not looking forward to it, is it because of the fruit or is it like you you feel better, right, when you're in ketosis. Yeah, um I do. I think I've mentally even feel better. It's just wh- I don't know, man, when you get into the slump and I don't know what flips in your brain, but for me, I literally it's like a f- switch. And now I just flip the switch and everything, I'm saying no to everything. And that's the mindset. And what, I don't know. Once I, it's like a monster in the closet, like bad food. And once you let that monster mm-hmm. out, it's you out. Say, Fuck it. it. I don't know what it is, but like for me, that's how it is. And so when I say have the mentality of always saying no, 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 like because it's everywhere and you have to say no, like the realization of the food industry is huge for me. It's like I was trying to preach to my dad about. Old people trust the food companies way too much. Yeah. Like, they're like, oh, they make it for us. It's food. Mm -hmm. No, it shouldn't even be allowed to be called food if it's made for human consumption and, like, to, if it's not good for you, it's basically poison. Some of this stuff I was reading to him, like, our stuff, like, some of the, like, I, I pulled out the bottle of Pam spray or whatever, and it's got, like, silicone in it. You know, like, there's shit in this food that they give us that they don't give a fuck, like, what's in it. So I just it's like a realization like the food industry it's not food it it's it should be illegal for them to call it food. Well, yeah, I mean, when it comes to like uh, sugary things, that shit is it's as addictive than a- anything. Like it's you know that's the thing with the ketosis is is when you're in ketosis, you don't really operate on blood sugar. When you have somebody who's you know hangry, which fucking drives me nuts. Like, grow up, you're going to be pissed off because you're hungry. Like, I, I've not always been in ketosis doing the ketogenic diet, but even when I was hungry, I wasn't a bitch to people, you know? Um, but um, what was I going with that? But the blo- Something to do with the blood sugar. I mean... No, it's true. Like, the our, our, we're so used... No wonder, no wonder there's so many diabetics because we are so used to these insulin spikes from all of these foods like, right. that are okay. just that's laced where I was and going laced. It. And it's criminal, like, to pa- the packaging that they give kids, like, the way that they market candy mm-hmm. and all of this. And the fact that we it candy is geared towards kids, it's I mean, fucking it, crazy. Uh, if you think about a baby who's never had anything other than uh, breast milk in their life, what's the difference in sugar, which makes them pop the fuck off, than crack? Really, I mean, it's going to be doing the same damage in the long run. I mean, <laughs> all these studies that came out um, a long time ago in the 50s that were funded by sugar companies, and they ruined a whole generation. We got a whole bunch of old fat people now. Um, you know, it's not even, you can't even trust the research right now. So it's a lot about how does it make you feel. And the keto stuff isn't always, I, I don't tell everybody they should do it. Definitely do it. Just shut up and do it. It's not like that. I know that people are different. Again, it's all relative. Um, you got to figure out what's what works for you, and can you maintain that? Like, can you do that on a day in day out basis? Because yeah. that's where it really gets. Because, dude, it's like the, being a keto. You have to have a cache of basic 
uh, supplies to maintain this lifestyle, See, you know. That's something that, that's what I was worried about because you said supplies, but what I was going to use is supplements. It's like, what are you supplementing? What else do you have to supplement with like powders and vitamins or whatever? Like, because well, we, we, everybody always just knows like you got to get the good fats and the, you know, good cholesterol so you make those fat bombs and stuff like that see you know that's i don't take any supplements anymore i used to take a vitamin every day i don't do any of that shit the the thing i learned um and now i'm just pulling it out of my ass but i'm pretty sure i remember this correctly but um when you when your body takes in a gram of sugar it's it, it takes a lot more to process that and it causes uh your body to not absorb vitamins and minerals as well so like when you're not having to process all this sugar, your body's using these vitamins and minerals that they get out of your food much more efficiently. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the uh, the keto is something I definitely recommend to try to people because it's one of those things that if you can get there and it has its ups and downs where when you first get into ketosis, a lot of people get sick, the keto flu um i actually don't remember why that is but um it's just a shock to your system i believe i mean it's it's and it's it doesn't happen every time right and it's one of those things that um it's a reaction from your body like your body's always thinking i'm dying what do i got to do to not die um and 99 percent of the time we're not dying and yeah. the shittiness we're experiencing is our body reacting to something yep um i can't remember who i heard this from um it might have been some other podcast, but they were talking about sugar and how it actually attacks your body and it attacks your cells and your cells start to protect themselves and they get some kind of uh, exterior coating. I don't want to say, but like mm-hmm. they, they stop growing and they stop um, regenerating, mm-hmm. but like because they're always protecting themselves from the sugar attack. And I don't know exactly. That's one I can't that's... confirm or deny, but it does sound good. I heard it. I um, you know, I can't make that shit up. Like <laughs> that is true. Um, something that I like had to deal with that I thought was going to be a huge hurdle doing ketogenic diet was like my workouts. I was like, oh my god, how am I gonna get the energy to really, you know, do good in the gym and do it the way I want to? And I was freaked out about that. Because I would, back in the day, um, when I was first learning in high school about lifting weights and shit, it was like, you got to eat so much carbs before, after, and during, if you want to be a fucking weightlifter, you know, the big thing was, you know, drink that protein and and Mm -hmm. sugar mixture right after, because you can repair your body. I had this thinking that I was like, man, I don't know what I'm going to, I don't know how I'm going to do this without that, that boost at the end. Is it? I switched to a um, a supplement called. This is really the only supplement that I, I use. It's called Blox B L O X, mm-hmm. and they're called Silk Chain Amino Acids, um, which is basically BCAAs. Blo- uh, uh, what does the B stand for? Blockchain? Not that's it. That's uh, that's the currency. Whatever. Cur- Branch yeah. chain amino amino acid, um, and those have no carbs. It's like uh, eight grams of protein. That's it while I'm working out and I'm not any weaker. I'm as strong or stronger than I ever was. And I don't notice it. Um, These are like these huge things that people have in their minds where it's like, nope, can't do it because of that. Like you can, but at least give it a shot. The the keto can really help you um, in terms of your day, not having to eat lunch for one thing, I was never one to like go out and eat lunch while I'm working. It's like we got work to do. Let's get to fucking work. Um, I, I can't stand. It's like, well, eleven thirty, time to drive to lunch, eat lunch for an hour, and then uh, another half hour back to wherever we're doing. No, but when you're in ketosis, you're not even feeling that. You eat when you kind of feel like it. I pretty much, I get up in the morning, go to the gym, and I'll have that uh, the blocks silk chain amino acid drink with me. I'll drink that while I'm uh, working out. And after that, I don't eat till at least six o'clock at night. I don't even think about it. Yeah. And it, it's just, it's freeing because one, you don't have to take the time to do it. And two, you don't have the bitchiness that comes along with it for everybody. Uh, I, 
I just um, want everybody to know to not be afraid of the keto diet. Yeah, that whole, you know, eating like every two hours. I tried that back in the day, and I just gained weight. But really, that whole method is just you're just spiking your insulin all day long. Mm -hmm. Like, what yeah, you, your body becomes it. resistant. You know, well, the idea with it is that. Um, you're working out and if you're not in ketosis, you have uh, glycogen is what your body operates off of. You've got like 30 grams of glycogen in your liver and then your muscles store glycogen as well. I forget what the total number is, but you can kind of do the math on you're going to be able to work out for this long. And once that glycogen's out, then you're technically burning ketones, endogenous ketones, which your body um, is using your fat it turns into ketones and burns it for fuel. Um, the idea with the, the protein powder sugar afterwards is that, okay, you've, you've used all your glycogen. You need to replenish that because that's the only way muscles can grow is what we're told. Um, and then when you have the protein mixed in with it, it supposedly shoots this protein back into your muscles and you're healed for your next time up. I mean, I haven't had one in a while after I worked out. It might feel like fucking crack as well. But um, in my experience, it hasn't changed anything, really. I'm still able to lift weights as much as I ever have. And it was probably a good thing because it made me take a step back and kind of look at what I was doing at the gym and then focus more on the, the little small things like my posture and these things that really in the long term are going to make me better off sure. Cause when you're older. That's, that's everything movement. Yep. Do your joints work? I feel like, um, you know, when you're just looking at foods and, you know, trying to stay away from processed foods, you're going to be eating pretty much healthy and be in ketosis anyways. If you're staying away from that shit, I mean, it's, inevitable yeah well we should be clear i mean because you can have unprocessed potatoes and potatoes and apples and those things they ain't going to keep you out of ketosis they might not be killing you but at the same time like you do want to be careful as to what you're recommending to people sure but something what did i hear about sugar recently that like uh sugar was only introduced to food like not even that long ago like no. 50 or 60 years ago yeah like in the 1950s um that's when the big thing was juice, like apple juice and orange juice. Like that's the big mind fucker because people, it was sold as being healthy. And that combined with research that was falsified telling people that fat and saturated fat are what cause heart disease, which is now in contention. I'm not going to sit here and say that's definitely not it because I've heard enough fucking podcasts of people arguing over it. But in my experience, I mean... I eat the shit out of, I'll eat a pound of bacon at a time. Blood work is perfect. Like there's no, it, it's more about the person, the body that you're in really is that, is that body the one that's, uh, you know, maintaining these fats? Because I, I, I think that they're kind of going towards sugar is causing these buildups. And that's really what makes it worse is the the sugar getting clogged up, converting into whatever, and I'm going down a road where I don't know exactly know what I'm talking about. But one thing that did occur to me that is total bro science is like, if your body's an engine, what does the engine need? Oil. Yep. Fat. Grease. It needs to be lubed. Your dad loves lube. Yep. Loves the lube things. <laughs> that The opposite side of it is... Uh, John Paul and I used to work at a, a place called Sunny Florida Dairy, and we uh, there was a coworker of ours that was like a caricature, and he th claimed that he would go and put sugar in somebody's gas tank and it'd fuck up your gas tank and ruin your car. Think about that. It's a weird coincidence. It's an urban legend. I've heard that before, though. But I mean, I don't think, think about it. It's not an urban legend. That's what people do. Think about what what's happening. That yeah. sugar gets in there and it fucks up something that's supposed to be lubed. And yeah. it destroys your engine. Oh, I, I'm always surprised at how a car or like, like, motor stuff applies to body science. I mean, it's not like I said. I'm not sure that this is why. It's to me, it's just a good uh, metaphor for it. Where it's uh -huh. like, what are the odds that, that those two things? 
yep. are good and bad for an engine. So that is true, though. It's about the f- the sugars being introduced. That's crazy. And like, I, what really opened my mind, and it, I was like thirty when it, I actually thought of this, but like, you're drinking concentrated juices, like orange juice. How many oranges did it take exactly. to make that one cup of orange juice or grapefruit yes. juice or you know cranberry juice? And it's like you're not made. Our bodies have never been. We've never been able to eat that many. Yes, oranges. That's the thing. Is fruits come with their own governor? They have water and fiber that exactly. slows down the processing of these sugars, so that it's not the crazy insulin spike that you. I mean, you're getting apple sugar. juice. How many apples are right. you eating? See, and that's them taking like smashing up apples and then they boil it down. It's not like they're taking smashing apples and then the runoff goes right into the bottle and there's apple juice for you. No. Yeah. They fuck with that some more. They put put in the boiler. Let's make it even greasier or whatever, what, like sugary, syrupy, and then they give it to you. And like, oh, here. Here's your serving of fruits for the day. Thanks. You're yeah. killing me. It's like if you want apple juice, eat an apple. If you want... Make it juice. in your mouth. Exactly. It's the same. Yeah. I So before we get out of here, there were a few things that I have... Um, at the gym, there's a, a few pointers that I've come across that don't seem to get talked about a lot. Um, you know how you sit on a, a a machine, a weightlifting machine. You ever see the guys that, or women that have their feet dangling, crisscrossed, and they're like sitting there. And it's like that doesn't look right. They don't care what they're doing. With but their I feet. also yeah. But they also don't know. They don't know. Obviously. Um, Easy tip. You always know how high your seat could be because it's at your knees. That's where your lap is. So you can walk right up to a machine, adjust it, put that bitch right up to your kneecap. That's how high your sheet, seat should be. If you go from there, you're, you're all good. Focus on your posture. Boom. Perfect form. Yeah. What I used to love is uh, when I used to uh, bench a lot is the guys that would throw their legs up when they're benching they're like oh take yeah them straight in the air <laughs> yeah <laughs> not play the them air on the fucking ground. they do the air fucking S- stick their wiener up yeah thinking that's gonna help yeah and that goes back to my like if you work on your form like at the time in the gym you might not look awesome lifting the, the tiny weights but at the beach you're gonna look a lot better compared to what you might be doing for that one hour at the gym well, that's the whole for the rest of your time i canceled my gym membership because i didn't want to go in there and curl 15, 20 pound dumbbells and, you know, bench 110 pounds. This is, this is what you got to think about. People who know about the gym, they're not making fun of the people who that go in there and they try and they're, you know, keeping to themselves. The people that get made fun of at the gym are the assholes that are grunting. They're dropping their weights. They got 80 pound dumbbells. Oh, I just got done with my set. And they drop them on the ground. It's like, bro, you can't handle it. You can't pick that up and walk it over there. Yeah. It's too heavy for you, then use a lighter weight. That's the stuff that gets me fired up. Yeah. It's like, dude, you're not, you're just trying to get people to look at you, but you look like a bitch dropping the 80 pound weights on the ground. You know who else is hating you? It's other fat people. Because <laughs> it's, it's, no, they're not. It's fucked up. No. But I used to, okay, listen, this is when I hate other fat people, is when they're half assing it. Like you see like a fat person walking, and I'm like, you need to be running. But hey, I that. know, I know, it's me. I don't, I'm hating myself in reality. Well, dude, nobody's... The reason why I say the only people that's getting made fun of that are the ones that are making a bunch of noises is because nobody else gives a shit. Like, everybody's just in their own world. Yeah. Nobody's looking at other people. Which, they're, they're afraid of what they're, the other people are thinking about them. That's that, what everybody's doing. And so that's like, how it should be. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it is. I mean, I don't know if that's how it should be. It's just, that's what it is. People don't give a fuck. Um... You get you can't worry about other people because ninety nine percent of people are doing something wrong. In Is the there? Gym. Have you ever met like the guy at the gym that's like positive as fuck and just like high fiving everybody, slapping asses, being like, "Good job!" Killing oh yeah, it. oh yeah. Everybody should be like that. I would go then. Yeah, there's also a guy at my gym who wears uh, like basically see through biker shorts that oh. are like underwear. Oh, yeah. And he's an African American man, and they're white. Oh yeah, and they show everything. Do you watch him when he gets on the bench, dude? 
It's so bad. It's like you can't look at it. <laughs> it's like offensively bad to the point where I've almost said something a bunch of times where it's like, dude, <laughs> he's, got he's not even in great shape. He's got like legs like mine, like little stick legs. The pants are baggy is what's insane about it. Oh, I thought you were going to say it's his it's dick. It's so that's what's insane about it. <laughs> well, it's insane that you can see every square inch of his dick. I know. In can your you face just get at the, to the gym. good stuff. How big is it? It's not that big. Oh, okay. Not that big. I, I don't think so. I think he might have huge balls, but I don't think his dick's that big. Oh, okay. Anyways. Then what is he doing? One last thing. One last tip at the gym. Before you start every set, grip the bar or whatever you're doing as hard as you can. That is uh, enacting your nervous system. Again, this is total bro science. I don't remember the exact mechanisms, but uh, there's something about even if it's just mental for me at this point, but gripping that bar as tight as you can is very helpful in increasing your strength by little bits at ooh, a time. Can I can I teach you something? I might actually ooh, teach you, me. You've seen this. You've seen athletes do this all the time on the sidelines, but it does exactly what you're saying. I'm going to show you, but I do it before I go jogging or walking, and it lights you up instantly. But one of these. All right, we're watching. He's standing. He's backing away from the chair. Okay, he's got it on Just him. Legs as high as you can, basically. Go. Yeah. One of these. Oh, yeah. He's doing power jumps. Yeah. That'll get you going. One of those. Look, or Ray Lewis. Face. That's a Ray Lewis gimmick. Yeah, it works. Like, dude, it spikes your... I mean, it, but it's doing what you said. It. it, it, it what did you say? It, it's in an it's activating. Way. Your, I mean, what I was saying with the, the grip, it's activating your nervous system. But in the same way, you're activating quick t twitch muscle fibers that we're dormant for the last half hour as we sit here and then you <laughs> lucky you didn't hurt yourself i could have just fucked myself up yeah but um anyways all right i think that was a pretty good uh rundown buddy it wasn't bad and we'll um we'll come back the next time we'll talk about god and religion and drugs like you wanted to yes and abortion and abor and just drugs <laughs> thanks everybody for listening check out sweatequitypod.com hit us up Eric or JP at sweatequitypod.com. Got him an email address. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. And uh, we'll talk to everybody later. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. It's going to be mental.